So listen, man, I, I want to start with congratulations. I know you're hearing it from everybody. Let me join the chorus. Thank you. You're so good in this. Thank you. Did you ever think when back, we spoke back in 2017 for Bushwick. Bushwick, yeah. At Sundance. And I know back then you were, you know, trying to do acting. And right. you were, but did you ever think back then that the next few years would bring such diverse roles and you killing it in, like, Blade Runner? You know what I mean? Like, the list is right. just, it's crazy. Right. I didn't think because I didn't assume. But, you know, when we had that conversation back then, you knew what I was after. And so I, I wanted, you know, I wished for, I prayed, and I asked, and I sought after. But no, I didn't assume it was going to, you know, come my way. It was uh, one of those challenges I knew I was up against breaking into Hollywood because people saw me a certain way. And it was one of those things that really uh, I had to work at. I really had to, you know, kind of separate myself a little bit from wrestling, which, you know, kind of sucked. Uh, and at the, at the time, I think a lot of people took wrong. Um, but I needed to do it to get people to see me differently. And it took years and years and years of, of that, taking smaller roles just to get people, you know, like the role of, as, you know, in Blade Runner. You know, I fought for that role because I knew it was a good role and it would get me somewhere. It would get me to here. And so, no, I, I, I something to this magnitude, no, I mean, I didn't. I didn't think it was going to come. I just kind of prayed and, and hoped for. <laughs> so this role is so different than anything you've done before. Mm -hmm. And it's getting to work with Knight. It's doing all this, these dialogue scenes. You know, it's not really action. Yeah. So I'm just curious, how much did you actually pay Knight to be in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny because when, so uh, with our first conversation, you know, I always kind of like get my fanboy out of the way. And it's kind of hard not to, but I can't move on until I do. And that was one of the first things I brought up. I was like, <laughs> I love that he always pops up in his films because people, they know that and they look for it and they're excited about it. And uh, so, yeah, no, I was, uh, I was happy because we didn't see, we knew when it was going to be on the film, but until the film was put together, we didn't, we, we didn't see it. So when I saw it, I just started laughing out loud and I kind of needed that moment of levity because I was just having so much anxiety about, the film and my performance and I was watching myself and as I typically do just cringing and that moment just gave me kind of a sigh of relief and a kind of a good laugh there it is that's his cameo um you have done uh, you've done a lot of acting the last few years yeah. if someone has actually never seen any of your performances on film what is the one you want them starting with with and why oh wow um oh that's a big question because now I feel like I'm going to dismiss any other role. <laughs> no, 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 because, yeah. um, look, and by the way, I want to caveat by yeah. saying not this film, because right. you're fantastic in this, and Thank I, you. people are going to go, but and it, of the other roles. That, and that's the thing, and it, and it probably wouldn't be this film either, because I'd want them to see kind of something that was kind of like right in the middle, definitely not like a lead role, uh, but something like, I always, I always go back to Hotel Artemis. Oh. For some reason that, I think it's because the role, it was different type of role, it was me playing a character, uh, wasn't kind of me always being that big badass. He was like a big badass, but he also had a heart. But it was also, I always associate myself with the people that I'm working with. And that was such a strong cast, like such a well-respected cast. It would probably be Hotel Artemis. Yeah, Drew did a really good job with that. I thought so as well. I was really proud of that movie. So you've worked with a number of directors now. Mm -hmm. How is Knight different on set than the other directors you've worked with? He's a... Uh, well, I, I have to say that, you know, most of the directors I've worked with, like really big name monster directors who are amazing directors, I haven't worked with uh, as a lead. And so I just spent more time with Knight. We had so many more conversations, like in-depth philosophical conversations. And so I think that was it. I think just the, the time investment that, you know, he had with me was greater than anything I've ever experienced. But also that his direction is never simple. He doesn't give you simple directions. He gives you very complex, very, you know, uh, conversational directions. And it's a lot to process. He gives you the direction, you have the conversation, but then he lets you process it and perform it. And then if he's happy, he's happy. And if he's not, he'll come in and we'll have another conversation. <laughs> so it's not, it's, it's weird. He's not, um, he's just not a, a typical director, not as far as anyone I've ever worked with, with. but he's not, it's weird. He's, Precise, 
but he gives you a lot of information to process, so it's not very specific, detailed. It's just a full-on conversation. I hope, I hope that makes sense. No, 100%. Okay. Um, what do you think it is about end-of-the-world movies and television shows that people just love that genre? Uh, I don't know, man. I think it's just, it, I think it's the suspense. I think it's one of those things where, so if it's a typical, like, horror movie, you can always, you have somewhere to run, you have somewhere to hide, and people will say, run, hide! <laughs> But with end of the world, there's nowhere to go. There's, you're not safe. No matter where you run, no matter where you hide, you're not safe if the world is ending. So I think it's that constant suspense. It's like a suspense of there is nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. You're not getting away from this. This is not a character with a knife in his hand chasing you. This is the apocalypse. This is the end of the world. One of the things about this, I, I read that there were some of the scenes you guys were filming were like 10 pages, yeah. five minute long scenes, which is, I'm sure for you, it's daunting when you're yeah. stepping on set because you, you know, you're part of it, this ensemble. Right. So how was it for you in training, if you will, for this role, right. preparing for this role right. versus some of the other things you've done? There was just so much more pressure. I mean, there was so much more pressure because there was, or there was um, not only that, but you know, um, Knight was also shooting with one camera and it was on film and nobody wants to burn up film. We all know it's expensive, so there's a pressure of that. But also, when there's one camera and they're kind of covering everybody, if somebody, if, if Jonathan Groff is just killing it, he's killing it, giving it his everything in this emotional performance, and then the can camera kind of turns your way, and if you blow it, that negates his whole performance. You gotta start all over and you gotta do it again. And nobody wants to do that. I mean, these people are just, they're so talented and so beautiful and they're giving these performances that are so emotional that the pressure is on for you to really kind of get sucked up into that moment and, you know, and bring your A game. Otherwise, you're just, uh, you're going to be a handicap to this cast and nobody wants to be that person. <laughs> no, completely. Yeah. Um, I, listen, my most, I, uh, while I was really looking forward to this movie, I will admit my most anticipated film of the year is a sequel to Dune. Uh, I think Denis is amazing, yes. and I definitely have to ask you what it was like working on the sequel. It was, it was. You've heard me talk about the first film. We've talked about the first film. Uh, it was that times a hundred, because it was Raban amped up, and it was my part is much bigger on this. I got to spend much more time with Denis, which I crave for because I love working with Denis. Um, and Denis again, he just, Denis brings out the best in me, and. Um, this was such an, an amazing experience, and I like I before I left the film, and we're talking about something else, and I'm not going to say until it actually happens. Sure, but he knows that my dream is to work with him as a number one because I really think that Danny will show me how good I can be. Um, but this is so amped up from the first film. The first film was just an introduction. Uh, to what this film is. There's just so much going on. It's so, it's so much more cutthroat and political and intense. <laughs> and there are actually, you know, there are moments of levity where there's some funny moments and they're kind of absurd humor, but uh, there are those moments. So it's just so much more amped up than the first film. Um, Greg Frazier shot it. Uh, the sequel, like he shot the first one, um, I spoke to him, he seemed very, he's very happy with how it turned out. Can you talk a little bit about, because I think his cinematography is one of the reasons amazing. those films are, it, yeah. why it's so good. Yeah, and he's amazing, and I love him as a human being. He's just a lot of fun. He's one of those people, he's he's really intense uh, when he works, he's uh, <laughs> definitely he's focused, but he's also, he's such a, I think he's so talented that you can just break away from it and just take a second and just have like a fun conversation and just talk about nothing. You know, you can step away from his work for a minute and just have a stupid conversation about, you know, the funny, something funny you saw last night. You know, but, I, and I love that about him, but yeah. Yeah, he, he, um, also he did the Batman. I mean, the list of what he's right. done is, it's, it's phenomenal. Right. And he talks about the way I see that and the way we put that on a pedestal and then he talks about it like, meh. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's, he's very. <laughs> Another day at the office. Yeah. Um, so I am curious, though. Um, obviously, now you are doing more projects, more acting. Have you already thought about what you're going to be doing this year? Like, what other films are you possibly getting ready to do? Well, I'm definitely going to do the sequel to My Spy because um, I know that for sure because we start later next month. <laughs> so I'm off, off to South Africa to do that, which I've been pushing for for a very long time because I love the first film. It was just such. It was so much fun. 
Uh, so we're going to do a sequel to that. Um, I'm hoping that we, I have a project uh, in, in the works with um, Drew Pierce again. Sure. Um, and we've collaborated on this film called The Cooler. And it's basically about um, the life, uh, this crazy weekend of this uh, guy who's a bouncer in Miami who's just trying to redeem himself. So it's that. But it's um, it's kind of a... It's kind of an after hours meets uncut gems. <laughs> so it's quirky and funny and suspenseful and thrilling, uh, but also a lot of heart. I and I really insist on doing stuff that's got you know heart at, at the core of it. Is it definitely going this year? We hope so. We hope so. Um, um, Drew's, uh, you know, he was busy on Mission Impossible, so he was really working with that, and uh, so now he's you know he's got a few issues that he's dealing with. So, but hopefully he'll start writing the script uh, soon. On that note, I gotta yeah. go. Yeah. Congratulations on this. Yeah. Um, gonna be a big hit.